Let's bring in now our panel to discuss these monumental Supreme Court decisions today. Uh, so, Alice, um, starting with you, uh, President Biden really laid the blame pretty fully on Republicans, even more so in some ways than the court. Uh, and in some ways, Republicans definitely sought out this fight, seeking to invalidate this uh, this executive decision that he had made. Uh, how do you think that's going to play? Well, look, that was to be expected to, to blame the Republicans. And, and I thought it was quite ironic. He said in his, his comments that uh, Republicans were not thinking about the working middle class Americans when, in fact, they actually a absolutely are middle class working Americans who uh, saved up and paid off their loans are now under Biden's plan would have been burdened with paying off other people's loans. And, and look, th this is as even mentioned in the uh, the decision, Nancy Pelosi herself said two years ago that President Biden doesn't have the authority to do so. This has to be done through Congress. Congress has the power of the purse. President Biden did not have the authority to give away the House. And, and while he's going to continue to try again, he actually played the students. He, he really did try and promise something that he couldn't deliver. And now he's going to continue to try to do so more. But students who had banked on his promise should be really upset about this. Well, I mean, do, what do, you, do you think that that is true? I mean, the question to him today was, did you give people false hope? And this has been hanging over students who are hoping that their student loans would be forgiven for a while now, almost a year. Uh, I don't think they're going to blame the president. I think they are going to look squarely at Republicans and look squarely at the court. Uh, it's interesting, right? I mean, the Supreme Court, particularly in the past few days, is really starting to define the presidential campaign of 2024 in very real ways. You saw a very feisty President Biden out there today, and you could almost hear the campaign argument he was going to make. I think these students who, as he said, got the notice, went to the website, filled out the application, and were days away from getting a check only to see it taken away, and Republicans celebrating that decision, I think they're going to be looking squarely at Republicans. They're going to be looking squarely at the Supreme Court. And Joe Biden sounded a whole lot like the champion for those students there today. I want to go. We have Ellie Honig with us as well. Ellie, um, one of the things that President Biden talked about today is using a different <coughs> law, the Higher Education Act of 1965, in order to pursue student loan debt forgiveness. What do you make of that? So, Abby, he's going to try again, according to the announcement that he just made. It's really important to understand today's decision by the Supreme Court was not about whether student loan forgiveness is good policy, bad policy, fair or unfair. What the Supreme Court decided today is that Joe Biden went beyond what was authorized by Congress. Now, the original attempt, the one that was struck down today, Biden based that on a 2003 law called the HEROES Act, which was passed after 9-11 and said that in times of national emergency, the secretary of education can make certain modifications or waivers of student debt. What the Supreme Court said is this contemplates smaller measures, the kind of measures, in fact, that Joe Biden just laid out at the beginning of his speech, but not a mass spend of four hundred billion dollars. Now, what Joe Biden is apparently saying is, well, we're going to try again, but we're going to use a different law. This is a broader law, the Higher Education Act, that gives the Secretary of Education, not limited to national emergencies, certain authority to waive certain loan obligations. But it's important to know this. First of all, that process of putting those regulations in place is going to take many months. It will certainly be challenged. And those legal challenges will take at least a year. Quickest scenario, that comes back to the Supreme Court for the next term, which will conclude about a year from now. So we are talking about a very long distance play here. And I think there's a lot of uncertainty about whether this attempt to do it again will succeed. Yeah, definitely. But it also shows that he's listening because some of the people pushing for this are uh, people like Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, a congresswoman. Uh, from New York and several other progressive Congress people. Joan, though, I want to ask you about something the president also just said. He said the, the court interpreted the Constitution wrong in this case, and I'm sure he probably feels that way about several of the other cases this week. But this is coming at a time when, when there is growing distrust from the American people in the court. That's no secret. A, a poll from September of last year showed 47 percent of adults expressed some uh, trust in the Supreme Court. That's a 20-point drop. That number is actually pretty high when you look at compared to Congress, for example, mm -hmm. but it's a drop for this for this court. This week was really a conservative court drawing a big line in the sand here. 
This is so definitely a six to three court. And I've been saying that the difference between a five, four conservative majority and a six, three one is much more than one vote. This is a very empowered conservative majority. And Chief Justice John Roberts did something interesting in this decision that sort of reflected that he's aware, Abby, of the kinds of polls that you cite. He said, you know, people will criticize our decisions uh, and cast doubt on the integrity of the court, but it's only because they don't like our decisions. And he talked about how it can hurt the integrity of the court and hurt the integrity of the country if people criticize these decisions as somehow going beyond the bounds of the law. But I have to say, as the competing factions articulated their decisions from the bench this morning, it was clear that the liberal dissenters think that this majority is actually undercutting the, um, the reputation of the court in the public eye just because of what it's doing. Just as Kagan said in a very rare dissent from the bench today, that the kind of power that's being amassed here and being taken away from both the legislative branch and the executive branch is being taken by the court itself and who's running the court itself but these six conservatives led by Chief Justice John Roberts. In some ways, Chief Justice Roberts has seemed to want to play the role of making sure the court doesn't go too far, right? But he did not do that in these two cases that we saw today. That's right. We all remember last year, this week in June, when he broke off from the majority that wanted to completely overturn abortion rights. And he said it would be such a jolt to the country. Yeah. But he didn't think it was too much of a jolt to the country to roll back all of uh, campus affirmative action or to reinterpret the statute here in a way that eliminated the Biden plan. We, we got to leave it there. OK. Uh, you can thank President Biden for <laughs> our short conversation. Uh, Mo, Alice, and Joan, thank you all for joining us.